What if Luffy had died when he tried to save Ace? With his unexpected death, the fate of his beloved crew and allies takes a drastic turn. Would Shanks try to avenge Luffy? Would Garp turn on the world government for the death of his beloved grandson? Join us as we dive into the thrilling world of One Piece and explore the dramatic possibilities that come with the potential downfall of our favorite rubber man. Luffy stretched his arms and with the key that Mr. Three gave him, he freed Ace from his shackles. He hugged his brother and smiled. He had fought his way through countless enemies to reach him. He was here to save him. Ace couldn't believe his eyes. He had given up hope of escaping from the Navy's execution platform. He felt grateful and relieved to see his brother alive. But Admiral Akainu blocked their way. He sneered at Ace and called him a sin for being the son of Goldie Roger, the late Pirate King. Ace felt a surge of anger and pride. He refused to let Akainu insult his father. He ignited his fist with fire and lunged at Akainu. Luffy tried to stop him. He knew that Akainu was too powerful for Ace to handle, but Ace ignored him and swung his fist at Akainu's face. Akainu dodged easily and punched back with his magma fist. Luffy saw the red-hot fist heading towards Ace's chest and jumped in front of him. In the blink of an eye, Akainu's fist pierced through Luffy's chest, burning a hole in his heart. Luffy felt a sharp pain in his chest and coughed up blood. He looked at Ace with a weak smile and said, I'm sorry, I couldn't let you die. You're my brother. Then he collapsed on the ground, lifeless. Ace was shocked and horrified by what he saw. He screamed Luffy's name and ran towards him, hoping that he was still alive. He cradled Luffy's bodies in his arms and shook him gently, trying to wake him up. He begged him to open his eyes and talk to him. He apologized for being a bad brother and for causing him trouble, and he cried tears of sorrow and regret. But it was too late. Luffy was gone. He had sacrificed himself to save Ace from certain death. Whoa! That would change everything in a crazy way. Can you imagine if all of that actually happened after Luffy's death? First of all, Luffy's burial would be totally nuts. So many people would show up to mourn him, there wouldn't be enough room. His crew and friends would be devastated. But then, those jerks in the world government would see it as the perfect time to attack everyone. Not cool. You might be wondering why the world government would attack Luffy's burial. Well, it's because they had a sinister plan in mind. They wanted to use this opportunity to carry out the great cleansing that they have been planning for a long time, mentioned in Chapter 908. What is the great cleansing, you ask? To my imagination, I think it's a secret project that aims to wipe out all the pirates and revolutionaries in the world, and anyone who opposes them, even if it means killing innocent civilians. Yes, you heard that right, innocent civilians. Luffy's burial was not just attended by pirates and allies, but also by ordinary people who admired him and his deeds. Luffy had a special gift of making friends with anyone he met, even his enemies. As Mihawk said at Marineford, one by one, he turns the people around him into his allies. So it was no surprise that many people came to pay their respects to him. But the world government didn't care about that. They only saw this as a chance to get rid of all their enemies at once. The Marines, led by the fleet Admiral Sakazuki, also known as Akainu, flood the scene with an unknown number of cannon fodder soldiers. We're talking about possibly millions of Marines descending upon the burial site. This war was unlike any other, a clash that would go down in history. The world government had thought they could eliminate all the pirates and revolutionaries during Luffy's burial, but little did they know, they were in for a rude awakening. The Straw Hat crew and their allies were not about to go down without a fight. With Zoro and Sanji at the forefront, their swords and kicks cut through countless Marines, displaying their true colors in a dazzling spectacle. Just when it seemed like all hope might be lost, a sudden disturbance in the air signaled a new player's arrival. The sea itself seemed to tremble as the figure approached, and the atmosphere crackled with anticipation. And there he stood, a shock of red hair blowing in the wind, none other than the legendary Red Hair Shanks. Shanks, accompanied by unexpected allies, Luffy's old enemies, joined the fray, forming an unlikely alliance against the Marines and the world government. It was a sight that left friend and foe alike in awe. Shanks, recognizing the profound impact Luffy had on the world and his unwavering spirit, had chosen to stand beside those fighting for justice. With Shanks' arrival, the tide of the battle shifted once again. The Marines and the world government were faced with a force they hadn't anticipated, but the Marines were no pushovers. They had a secret weapon up their sleeves, the Dark Squads of Assassins. These elite killers posed a serious threat to the Straw Hats and their allies. From the shadows, they struck with precision, 
taking down many pirates and revolutionaries. It was a clash of titans, an intense battle where the stakes couldn't be higher. Yet the pirates and revolutionaries were not alone in this fight. Unexpected help arrived from Sabo, leading the freed slaves from Arijua and Jinbei joining forces with the revolutionary army. Their arrival on a ship that broke through the marine blockade caught everyone off guard. With their fire and water powers, they countered the marines' attacks, tipping the balance of forces. Their presence infused the battlefield with renewed hope, rallying the troops and inspiring them to push back against the world government. It was a true game changer. But the marines had their trump cards as well. The ground trembled as the imposing pacifistas joined the fray. These mechanical warriors possessed incredible strength and capabilities, posing a significant threat to our heroes. With their laser beams and monstrous power, they instilled a sense of dread on the battlefield. And let's not forget Cypherpol, the shadowy intelligence organization within the world government. These highly skilled agents, shrouded in mystery, revealed their true power, striking fear into the hearts of the opposing forces with their espionage and assassination skills. Amidst the chaos, the Dark Alliance of the Emperors made their entrance, Blackbeard, Kaido, and Big Mom. These infamous pirates saw this chaotic situation as the perfect opportunity to further their own ambitions. Arriving on three different ships, they caused a stir among both pirates and marines alike. But just when the pirates are losing it in the heart of the chaotic battlefield as the marines are pushing them to the limits, everyone is blasted by a huge gust of wind. Everyone looked up in shock as they saw a familiar figure in a green cloak standing on top of a nearby hill. It was none other than Monkey D. Dragon, Luffy's father and leader of the Revolutionary Army. He had arrived with his top commanders. He had also brought along some new allies, Crocodile, Mr. One, Mr. Two, Mr. Three, Mr. Four, Miss Doublefinger, Miss Merry Christmas, Miss Valentine, and Miss Golden Week. They had all escaped from Impel Down thanks to Dragon's help and had joined forces with him against the world government. Dragon had also freed some other prisoners from Impel Down who had agreed to fight with him. Buggy, Mr. Five, Miss Monday, Daz Bones, and Bon Clay. They had all come for Luffy's burial but were delayed. This unexpected reinforcement breathed new life into the pirate's cause, and the marines trembled in the presence of Monkey D. Dragon alone. The battle raged on with both sides fighting desperately for their lives. Amidst the chaos, Sabo witnessed a Kainu overpower Ace with his devastating magma attacks. Fueled by determination and brotherly love, Sabo rushed to face off against a Kainu, seeking to turn the tides in Ace's favor. The clash between the two is fierce, as Sabo unleashed his fire powers and dragon claw, matching a Kainu's magma fist and meteors blow for blow. However, the Admiral proved to be too strong, landing a devastating blow on Sabo's chest, leaving a searing burn mark. Barely conscious, Sabo fell to the ground, his strength waning. Just as Akainu prepared to deliver the finishing blow, a powerful punch resonated through the air, stopping him in his tracks. It was Monkey D. Garp, intervening to save both Ace and Sabo from Akainu's wrath. Garp ordered them to retreat while he confronted Akainu, unleashing his legendary fury and strength. Blaming Akainu for killing Luffy and betraying the marines, Garp's fist of love collided with Akainu's face, driving him into the ground. With unyielding rage, Garp picked up a massive boulder and hurled it at Akainu, crushing him under its weight. It was a final act of vengeance for the death of his beloved grandson.